Hola! Where do you sleep on the Camino? What is an albergue or a refugio? How do they work? Is your stuff going to be safe? Are you going to be safe? Will you need things like a sleeping bag, sheets or pillows? And what other accommodation choices have you got? I'm Mike and I make helper videos on the Camino. Today's episode is sponsored by Griffo, my dog. At first glance, the big picture of accommodation for pilgrims is a little confusing with so many options. Hotels, hostel, hostel, casa rule, parador, parochial, pension, and then the variety of albergues, including municipal, private, and donativo. I know, right? You just want a bed for the night. It's all these options. It's like, ah! Okay, let me break the list into two. You have general public accommodation and pilgrim only accommodation. Let's start with the general public accommodation. This is the most expensive list. A hotel is just like home. Hotels vary hugely in price and facilities. A parador is an old luxury hotel run by the state. They're very pretty. Pension is a guest house style accommodation. They're usually a private room, often with an ensuite. Hostels are like a youth hostel, mostly dorm style, but many will have private rooms for an extra fee. Hostel. These are not the Spanish spelling of hostel, nor are they a hotel. They're kind of in between. You know, a private room, often run by a family. Casa Rural directly translates as country house, and you can rent the whole house or sometimes just a room. Think bed and breakfast. The last public type is Airbnb, which is anything from a room in a house to a whole house. Now we've come to my favourite. Pilgrim only accommodation, and that's what we'll focus on for the remainder of this episode. An albergue is a pilgrim only hostel for walkers on the Camino de Santiago. They are mostly dorm rooms, however, some have limited private rooms or women only rooms. That info can be found in your travel guidebook or your favourite Camino app. What's the difference between an albergue or a refugio? An albergue and a refugio are basically the same thing. Well, traditionally refugios were a very basic structure, while albergues were nicer dorm facilities. In more recent years, albergue has become the more commonly used phrase, although I found the French still prefer refugio. There seems to be some debate over this. Put your experience in the comments down below and share in the discussion. Standards of albergue goes from lovely and modern to this thing deserves to be burnt to the ground. Most, however, are quite nice, and it's often actually the staff that give you the nasty shock rather than the facilities. Albergues come in three different main types, or I should say, come from three different philosophies or organisational structures. Municipal albergues are, as the name implies, run by a municipal government. Local government builds, maintains and operates these hostels, and like any bureaucracy, they love their rules. Opening times can vary quite a bit, and it's often after the advertised start time. Many have kitchens, or had kitchens, but the oven seems to have been removed in recent years. No boots inside and no poles. Well, this goes for all albergues. But the municipal ones almost always seem to yell at you about it before you're allowed inside. You can only stay one night without a medical certificate. Some lock the doors at night, so you've got to be back before they lock you outside. And you must, must, must be out by 8 a.m. or they turn into tyrannical monsters who you're not sure if they're going to call our policia on you or bury you in the backyard. Okay, so maybe I'm painting a hard picture of them. Most are lovely, but some are kind of crazy. I don't think they get paid all that well, and I guess so many ignorant pilgrims every day kind of riles you up after a while. This huge albergue has 183 beds and is in Roncesvalles. It's an example of a recently renovated municipal albergue. It is made of a large hallway dorm on each level. However, the renovation has made for smaller sections comprising of just two bunks or four beds, each with lockers and power. There was Wi-Fi, but it took an hour to transmit just two JPEG photos from my phone. Check-in was a production line of efficiency, and before 8am, they slowly but constantly turn the music up until it's unbearably loud, well before 8am. 
Albergade de Peregrinos Aca is for some pilgrims their last night before Santiago. This place should be cleaned up with napalm or a small thermonuclear device. Mold under the beds, mold in the showers, exposed windows in the shower rooms with no curtains. I had sore lungs after a night there. Private albergues are often the nicest. They are run by people who usually, although not always, love the Camino, run it as a business and want happy customers. They understand that it's a word of mouth business and usually make a good effort to make sure you have a positive experience. Most private albergues don't mind if you want to stay an extra day or two to sightsee or rest up. They usually have a nice lounge area, good laundry facilities, clothesline, and often you can buy meals there for a reasonable surcharge. I particularly like this private albergue just outside Saria. They call this a Casa Albergue, which means country albergue, and it sure is with its own pond, old stone mill, and lovely new facilities. It's one of my favorite private albergue highlights from my Camino experience. Donativo albergues are, as the name implies, donativo or by donation. Unfortunately, many pilgrims think, oh cool, free accommodation. No, they have real costs. And unfortunately, because of this, many people don't donate reasonably. This means facilities can be a little bit sparse and some have closed down in recent years. Donativos are usually operated by a church, which makes them a parochial or a parish run albergue. A good example of this style of albergue is in Logroño at Albergue Parochio Santiago El Rio, where there are a lot of beds in one dorm room. However, we got to go through the main church via these cool hidden tunnels. I felt a little bit like Indiana Jones. Churches have special services for pilgrims, and although it's not compulsory, even if you are not a religious pilgrim, it is a wonderful cultural experience. I recommend you stay in a few Donativo albergues over your Camino as they add to the flavour of your journey. And donate generously. On a side note, in Logroño I had an injured foot and the top priest also drove me to the emergency room in his own car. He translated and made an otherwise nearly impossible task, well not pleasant, but he made it very doable. He would not even take any money for the fuel. Not surprisingly, my donation was bigger than usual. Even though when the nurse said she would jab me in the backside with a needle on the count of three, she went one jab. He laughed along with the nurse. Although, how do you get mad at a priest for having a sense of humor? Municipal albergues are usually around six to seven euros for a bed. Private albergues are sort of 10 to 12 euros and donativos are pay what you can. Not free. Have I mentioned this before? These prices will jump up a little bit if meals are included and can be around sort of 20 or 30 euros all up. In 2019, Orizon was the most expensive one I stayed at, at 32 euros. And in 2022, that has jumped to 40 euros. My full review of Orizon will be linked at the end of this video. What was your most expensive albergue? Was it worth it? Share in the comments below. Will you need a pillow or a sleeping bag? The only time you might need this is if you're stuck without accommodation and you need to camp out for a bit in a, some sort of shelter or like a farmer's barn. We never did, however I did see people carrying some just in case. I carried a small inflatable pillow. I really only used it when I was in public transport. Inside the albergue, the mattresses are often rubberized and they do supply pillows. And they'll usually give you a disposable set of pillowcases. This is the size of the Spanish pillow. And they'll also give you another pack, which will have your bed sheet. They are made from hennet style paper fabric, disposable to help reduce the spread of bed bugs. That's right, don't let the bed bugs bite. I never knew they were real, but they are. Make sure you subscribe. I'm going to do an episode on bed bugs at some stage. What I used to keep warm was not a sleeping bag, rather a sleeping bag liner. Silk ones are the best as bed bugs can't get through them at all. At one albergue, I forget where now, they did not have any blankets. No worries, I just wore all my cool weather clothes inside my bag liner and I was fine. Inside an albergue, your stuff is usually very safe. I had heard to be wary of walkers going east uh, news of these tends to travel west with the walkers uh, heading towards Santiago. 
I never had trouble leaving my gear in albergues or even bars. Pilgrims don't have that much of value and your expensive devices you tend to take with you when you walk into town anyway. Use common sense though and you should be fine. Am I safe? Well, I had a few nervous times around festivals and alcohol-fueled crowds as I was travelling with my 11-year-old son. However, in Albergues, we always felt safe. Pilgrims are um, not criminal types. We had no issues at all. Most of the time other pilgrims spoke of trouble, though, was actually when they were on their way to their start of the Camino. Many males travelling on their own lost wallets or phones while in Paris late at night. Never heard of them losing anything in an Albergues. So what are the benefits and trade-offs in albergues? I honestly love albergues. Sure, you lose some privacy, snoring can be annoying, and being out at 8 a.m. can be tough at times, especially with an 11-year-old. But there are so many upsides. Talking with pilgrims is one of the highlights for me of Camino. In any albergue, you're living right next to so many other people. You can't help but to talk. From talking, you get tips, share experiences, and sometimes gossip. You may also organize going out to dinner together or making a banquet in the kitchen, or sometimes just sharing a bottle of wine. Did I mention they do nice wine in Spain? Mm. I often found kindreds at the Albergue and we'd walk together for the next section. The bonds and connections you make will stay with you even when you go home. Please make comments below, like and subscribe. Want to know about my Orizon experience? Watch that video. Want to know more about Pilgrim's Passports? Click on that one. Hey Griffo, thanks for sponsoring this episode, mate. Mwah. You're such a cootie cootie dog. Such a cootie cootie dog. I know, you're not used to being on camera, are you?